uh, a very uh, good afternoon to everyone uh, and thank you so much for uh, uh, you know taking your time uh, a thank a big thank you to hitesh and the entire uh, rai team superb job done guys uh, i would want to uh, you know start this entire round table uh, sorry this entire panel discussion with uh, a fantastic set of luminaries who have been here you know and have actually helped us create the entire retail industry in india uh, a very quick round of introductions amit can we start with you please yeah so i am amit i am cio at shri so we are a daily wear ethnic uh, brand and we have 140 stores in india and 10 outside india so we are just expanding thanks thank you amit thank you hi i am santosh uh, ceo nicobar design uh, we are a 7 year old business uh, we have about 19 stores and a very strong e-commerce presence thank you Good Thank afternoon. You, My name is Rahul Bhalla. I'm the co-founder of Latin Quarters. Uh, we're a 17-year-old company and we have a presence of about 400 stores across India. We're into women's Western wear, apparel and accessories. Hi, my name is Varun. I'm the founder and CEO of QBuster. We are an Android-based point of sale system used, for, used by retailers for billing, inventory, CRM loyalty, all combined into one. And uh, just a quick thing, uh, we have a stall outside as well. So if you want to see Cubasta live in action, just pass by and uh, I am hopeful that you will love what we have built so far. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Varun. I am Vishal Jindal. I am the founder for Biryani by Kilo. We are probably the biggest biryani and kebab chain in India. We are in more than 40 cities, more than 100 outlets. Our USP is we make biryani on order and we dum cook in the handi and we deliver it in the same handi so i think uh, of course we are known for our kebabs etc so i hope all of you have tried our products otherwise do try here look forward to an enticing conversation vishal yes uh, this is this, this is vikas uh, i run p safe uh, i'm sure a few of the women must be having a p safe in on in their bags so we do innovative products from puberty to menopause and we talk about toilet hygiene menstrual hygiene sexual wellness pleasure and of course, grooming. Uh, we are an omni-channel brand. Uh, yeah, that's us. Thank you, Vikas. Thank you so much. So, uh, you know, without further ado, I want to kick off this entire panel conversation. Uh, you know, if you look at how uh, uh, retail is growing in India, and particularly what has happened during and post-COVID, I want to open up a question uh, to the entire panel at this moment, and then I'll go one by one. Uh, what do you think is the most important key differentiator at this particular point in time to help grow your respective brands? Anybody can take it. Whoever wants to come in first. Vikas, you want to take a sh uh, shot at it? I just want to say go one ahead, thing, Amit. then we can have... A yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. It. I think uh, India is a United States of India, I believe. You know, <laughs> the kind of, the kind of uh, cultures, languages and, uh, you know... Uh, different different uh, various versions of people various fashion uh, likings i believe uh, it's it's very important it's a huge uh, kind of market so if you talked about india so no no I absolutely touch this point because we should say now united states of uh, india united states of india which are listening vikas no, i think i'm in a i'm in an industry which is considered to be taboo a long back uh, especially uh, in this room, but not anymore now. I think the great time in India is marketing to Gen Zs. And I think they are leading the change of conversations, especially for us. Uh, technology. Uh, Correct. I think, I think social media platform like Instagram, when I can probably say that we have created around 10 sexual educator or sex educator online uh, okay. who started working with us. Okay. That leads to conversation uh, uh, and all those kind of stuff. Uh, how we have brought men into conversations and th I Excellent. think this has happened because because of social media because Excellent. people started talking about it I think for us in a, in, a short, in a nutshell I can say that Gen Z and now Alpha I think they want to they, do, they want to buy products which their parents they don't want to buy products their parents were using it I think that really helped us Excellent. So, so opportunities options when I was growing up, in my washroom, there was only two products. I remember that Hello Shampoo was there, and I was doing everything else. I had a lot of water. Today, I have 25 things to do. So I think the options which we have now. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Santosh, what is your thought on this particular topic? What do you think is the key differentiator? 
I think, uh, uh, I mean, I would talk about Nicobar. We are in the Lux or bridge to Lux business. Yeah. Uh, for us and probably brands of our kind, it is about staying true to the purpose of why the brand was built. Correct. Uh, when you lose sight of the purpose, then you lose the business. Uh, we are about seven years old, but yeah. we didn't lose sight of the fact that we're built as a brand that is rooted to India, but inspired by stories and journeys across the Indian Ocean. So that okay. inspires our design, our uh, uh, motives, our patterns and all of that. Okay. And I think customers are checking in. Customers okay. are watching. I mean, are you still there? Because uh, for, for our customers, from what I hear, and I talk to customers almost every week. Wow. Uh, they are checking in to see that, guys, have you lost your way like everyone else? Or are you still there with us? Are you still there with yeah. us? Huh? So, so for me, and given all the noise that is there on social media, I would rather have a thousand loves than a million likes. Excellent. Uh, so that's the way I would look at it. That's a good metric to look at. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you. Rahul, what do you think about this? How do you create a key differentiator considering you have two fantastic contemporaries sitting next to you? Um, I think, in my opinion, uh, one of the biggest uh, challenges what's happened is that technology has played a very positive and negative role in the past few years. I agree. Uh, social media, obviously, like the gentleman mentioned, uh, has a lot of factor on influencing what to buy, when to buy. Correct. Uh, customers have also become very aware of the product. I think a few years ago, maybe a day ago, consumer was not that well aware. They didn't understand the product. They didn't understand, let's say, in our industry, the fabric, sustainability, whatever. And um, now I think the customer is a lot well aware of what's happening. Uh, they want ethical practices in your business. They want sustainable view. Okay. And uh, still, I feel in our business, product is still the king. Okay. Certainly, certainly, product is the king for you. Correct. But I does that act as a differentiator at times? I think for us, uh, what how we differentiate because we are into women's wear and 90% of the competition is with international brands. Mm -hmm. I think what we in our organization say is that we are uh, making products for Bharat. Okay. While most of the, our competition are making products for the world and they are sending it to India. Uh, so earlier we were making products for India. So what I mean by India was Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore. Okay. Uh, in the last 10 years, we have moved that thought process to Bharat, okay. which is more the tier 2, tier 3 cities where we feel the money is, Correct. where the customer is easier to please, uh, they have less options and they don't have any preconceived bias that I am only going to buy from a certain brand. So though they are more willing to experiment. So market differentiation is also something that you feel is an important metric. I would say so, yes. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you. Vishal ji, in a city like Delhi or Delhi NCR, how do you create that en enticing differentiator? See, not only in Delhi, but uh, all of India, I think our differentiator is the authenticity in the product. See, biryani is a hundreds of year old dish. So we wanted to keep the authenticity, like we, the rice we use, is a two years naturally aged premium basmati. The way biryani used to be made is in a closed vessel. Like, so we use the same handi to cook it, wow. dumb cook it and deliver it in the same handi. So it's the authenticity of the product. See, food is uh, not, it, it's well-being. Like people say, you are what you eat. So it's health, it's everything. It's not like a Ola, Uber, taxi where you, where you know, sit and go. As long as you reach the destination, more or less it's okay. See, this is what you're consuming inside your bodies. So the authenticity of the product is the differentiator. We'd be cooking in that hardy, the kind of chicken or vegetable or the spices we use and the freshness and hygiene and of course the taste. So I think the product itself is the differentiator, I would say. Awesome. So yours is also product. Excellent. Very good. Varun, what is your thought on this considering you are a, a, a tech enabler on so, this panel? So all, all of the differentiators that they are asking actually runs on us. So we are a differentiator <laughs> to the differentiator uh, in a sense Good that we, we enable uh, each of these guys to actually envision and execute. And how do they execute is when we come into picture. So I think we help them create a differentiator in the market by providing them products uh, which is better than the previous versions, than the legacy versions, uh, which they might be using in their outlets. So I think uh, that is our help. Or you can say 
in in our language we say vikram betal vikram betal so <laughs> we are vikram they are betal they ride on us <laughs> thank you varun I'll, i'll come back to you on how do you do this considering you have fantastic uh, competition in the market you know this uh, this particular aspect takes me uh, you know in it rings a very intriguing bell in my mind i want to understand particularly with you vikas how do you at p safe create and ascertain that yes this is my tg this is my target group point number 1 point number 2 how do you engage them you can be as elaborative as you can <laughs> up to you now uh, first we need to understand i am in a uh, industry again which is taboo yeah uh, if if you talk about data uh, i don't know how many of you know that if we talk about period care or sanitary napkins uh, if we have a 100 menstruator yes men also bleed Uh, we have only 30 out of 100 will be using a period care product the 70 of them will be using rugs newspaper ashes and banana leaves oh my god okay. right to pehle to industry bahut choti hai hamari uske baad even in this room uh, i don't know if if i want to engage please any please. father who can raise hand that they buy pads for their daughters one two three excellent okay so you can understand it's how difficult for us to engage okay so what we do is uh, we create thought leaders right and i think it's just because of the ease of instagram or whatsapp or telegram i think it's become more and more that agar hum kisi ko bhi beche hai na then hum uske piche pad jate hain <laughs> right yaar aap mujhe review do huh. aap uh, of course not on the on the platform on the social media Correct. can you talk to us so we always believed in middle class long tail influencers now middle class not in the economic terms mm -hmm. but in terms of followers so i have around 2000 followers myself so i am a middle class influencer okay people know that if i am putting something a product it's not that i have taken that product as a influencer but i like genuinely like the product or i bought the product so for example okay. i was i was showing uh, the nikoba shirt uh, to the gentleman here and so that's i'm actually an influencer for nikobar right okay. so we go up to that and that's why we have created 30000 plus user generated content wow right over the last 7 years wow so that helps Amazing. us then, and then lot of people talk to us because we also sell menstrual cups which needs to be inserted there are different size of menstrual cups the way okay. people or women has given birth they want to talk to us so we have a very robust uh customer care team where people we talk to them we, we guide them okay so that's that's the way of engagement and of course uh, i think i think uh, the more you talk about uh, body positiveness gender equality uh, sustainability i think our tg which lies between 15 to 35 they go for it wow so uh, i actually when i started i made a mistake of marketing to people my age uh that was wrong because we are generation as gen x uh and we were told not to insert anything inside our vagina because of the virginity issues and we started marketing to gen z's okay here we go from wow. 2000 cups a month to 70000 cups a month i think that's the change we have but how do you build that quotient of personalization that that trust with your 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 tg how do you, how do you do that so it's all started with the our hero product which is toilet seat sanitizer spray okay. uh so we discovered toilet seat sanitizer spray p safe it had proof name 10 years back on a travel when my wife suffered from uti and post which she had never gone uti because she is not holding on the p okay uh, i'm just building up to this she is not holding on the p and of course she is sitting on a toilet seat which is now sanitized now over the years people who have been using it their uti or infection has gone down okay so once you have created that trust so bringing another product from that same staple uh i think uh, uh it becomes easy for us people they they told me even my investors you know why you want to keep an intimate wash up piece safe or a menstrual cup a piece safe or a sanitary napkin a piece safe it's already a very crowded market that okay. trust which we have built on the toilet seat sanitizer no so when you talk about sanitary pads we not in whispers and uh, stay freeze huh. we are on a biodegradable and organic which costs 30 rupees versus 12 rupees a normal pads so my target is a women mm. who believe in sustainability mm. can use 3500 rupees for a year okay. a nikoba shirt cost 5000 rupees <laughs> <laughs> sustainability a pad will I'm decompose i'm sure santosh will delve on it later on 
because a pad will decompose in 30 days versus 300 years for whispers. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. And I'll come Sorry, back. I can go on and on. But no, no, absolutely. We would want to understand how do you correlate that to you know the overall India GDP. It's a it's a very extreme uh, you know interesting proposition, guys. And I will come back to you, Vikas, on that part. Uh, next question, uh, you know, something very similar, Amit and Santosh and Rahul, for you guys are you know you are in a space where. Uh, I don't know, but we what probably the audience would also like to understand that is there a scope of discretionary spending, or do you even look at that angle where you want people to come in and you bring in that exclusivity? And if you bring in that exclusivity, how? How do you do it? How are you achieving that? Santosh, you want to take a dig at it first? Uh, like I said earlier, Nicobar is about um, the 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 pillars of Nicobar is on the storytelling uh -huh. that we do behind our product. Okay. So we make beautiful clothing, but we communicate it in such a way, whimsical, uh, with full of surprises, beautiful photography, that generates the interest. Okay. Yeah. And we make the product which is inspired by mindfulness. Um, so therefore, we use organic cotton, modal, viscose, uh, which is good for the planet. Did you know that some of our uh, tags some time yeah. back was made out of recycled elephant poo. Uh, so, so that's the kind of mindfulness we have. Okay. At the same time, we don't talk big about it. We're not saying that we are mindful so come and buy. Our customers know that. Okay. But we communicated the product, uh, the motives, the journeys in such a way that drives the interest. It drives the interest. It drives, it drives the, interest, the, keeps the audience engaged. to your brand. Yeah. And our customers are checking with us to say that we love your brand, we Correct. bought into it, are you still there? Okay. So okay. we make sure that we don't lose sight of the purpose. But if you, if you look at the trend that is happening right now, particularly in the last typically one and a half, two years, uh, a, a simple buyer like me also prefers to come to a store, but when I want to purchase, I'll go online and I'll purchase online. Yeah. Typical showrooming activity. Yeah. Yeah. How, do you, how do you cater to that particular activity, your audience? I mean, do you, do you see that coming out as a cohort for you, as a segment for you that you want to focus on? Or do you still want to stay offline, don't want to go online? Look, about 30, 35% of our business is online. Okay. So therefore, our customers are definitely omni. Okay. Yeah? So they go to a retail store to touch and feel the brand. Okay. To get experience of it. They go to check out what's new. They, when they see something in the store, they typically buy there. They don't then say, okay, I'll buy online, unless some item is not available. Uh, but, uh, and then online is typically when they're in a hurry. There okay. is agility required, they want something quickly, and they're sure about the product. Okay. They bought it before, or it's for gifting. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. Amit, what is your thought on this? <coughs> Do you yeah. also feel something very similar with Santosh, or you have a different yes, yes, opinion? Yes, he's perfectly right. So I think one part which he has mentioned about the communication, right? So. Uh, ethical sourcing practices are, should be communicated, I believe. Okay. So we also use a lot of Leva viscose for our uh, products. And second thing, you touched upon the Omni part of it. So uh, I believe people uh, should understand Omni in a way that it's not that you're present at all the uh, channels. There should be a seamless integration, which is the key in the Omni, right? Correct. If, if a person started uh, his or her journey on Instagram, say, and he discovered the product. He went to the website maybe. Correct. He added some of the products in the cart. Correct. Now he has abandoned the cart, right? He went to the store. Hmm. Now that cart is not connected, if it is not connected with your POS, POS. it is not a seamless experience for a customer. Okay. So if a customer is coming to the store and he wants to understand, he talks about the product or maybe he enters his number hmm. uh, in the pause, the store manager should see his cart, which he, uh, he, he or she has mm. added uh, the product. So he can upsell, he can suggest products, and he can talk about uh, what he is already like. Right? Okay. So I think that is the seamless journey we should talk about. Okay. I mean, we should say we are multi-channel. Uh, Omni is, again, uh, a lot of discoveries needs to be done in… Like in an alter ego, if I may say yes, so. Exactly. Fair enough. So, fair so enough. Uh, being available at everywhere is not Omni. The seamless experience is Omni, but I believe. 
Perfect, perfect. Rahul, uh, do you think and do you agree with Santosh, do you agree with Amit or do you think personalization is also an important aspect of this? Um, obviously, I agree with both of them and uh, more than personalization, I think the customer today uh, wants experiences. I think people are moving just from a product based that they're not coming in to buy a product, they want experience, they want the whole gamut that goes with it. Uh, they want to be treated well, they want uh, robust after-sales service, they, they want to make sure that the product is upcycled. I think fast fashion is kind of going um, out. I think people want slow fashion. I think people, especially the younger consumer, the Gen Zs, the Alphas, they want something, they don't want to wear and throw, they are very concerned about the environment. Okay. Uh, in our case, like the gentleman was saying, 30% of his business is online. In our case, it's less than 3%. Okay. 97% of our business is offline because the story we are selling is the product, the hand feel, the fit. We are saying that uh, we're going to give you product or we're going to give you fits which suit your body, which in my opinion is something we want them to experience. We want them to come to the stores, touch the fabric, find out why is it more expensive, why is it different, why does it fit better. So I'm a very strong believer of offline retail. Okay. And... Uh, Omnichannel is something I've been hearing for the past 10 years. I honestly feel there are very few, if any, retailers in India who have managed to do Omnichannel seamlessly. Like he was mentioning the word seamless. I know. I, I, maybe I would say Decathlon is one name that comes to my mind. Okay. Where I can order right now and pick up after an hour or so. But overall, this word is used very often in probably every <coughs> conference. Everyone talks about tech enabling and omnichannel. Correct, correct. Yet to see a very successful story behind it. Wow. Okay. I go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Varun. You want to speak something? Yeah, no. Go ahead. I just wanted to ask, what's the reason behind this? I wish I knew, but <laughs> as a consumer, I'm I'm speaking from a consumer point of view. I haven't seen, uh, including I would say, including our brand. Uh, I haven't seen like we are also not very seamless in our omnichannel. We have. Okay issues, we have, uh, you know, a lot of things. But even as a consumer, if I see large retailers, there have been very few who have been seamlessly able to do omni-channel successfully to the consumer. In the conference and here to talk about it is correct, but the truth, from a consumer point of view, I, I am still to see. No, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, if you are completely dependent on offline, this brings a new question to my mind. How do you continue to engage your existing customers, probably someone who's just walking into one of your stores, how do you continue to engage them? So, how do you do that? So fortunately, I mean, you're not going online, you're not, you know, like no, 3%, so, percent, but how do you engage them? So we are online. Um, most of our online sales, sales happen on discounted merchandise. Okay. Uh, like I was discussing with Santosh earlier that fortunately we are in the women's apparel space and in my opinion, please don't kill me for it, women are not brand loyal. Okay. Women, women are product loyal. <laughs> Uh, men are brand loyal, so okay. so if I I will walk into go a mall, ahead, ahead, I will walk into a mall. I'll know exactly which store I want to go. I'll walk in, pick up, try one, pick up four colors, sit in my car, walk out. Women are product loyal. They would walk past a show window and they would say, "Oh, I like this dress." Okay. They're gonna walk in. They're gonna try it. They may ne they may never have heard of that brand. The same customer who's going to Nicobar would buy from Zara, would buy from us, yeah. would buy a belt from Sarojini Nagar market. Okay. Right. So for us, how to keep the customer engaged is like I said, again, in the women's wear market, it's product is the king. If your product is up to date, your storytelling is a part of it. Obviously, the quality has to be an issue. I mean, that has to be taken care of. I think the engagement happens on its own. Uh, there are very few instances where you tell a very good story, but your product doesn't back it up and you are successful. But if so you I speak of women, I mean, they, to some extent, want that quotient of personalization. With your 400 outlets, if somebody has purchased something in Delhi and probably goes and purchases something in Hyderabad or Bengaluru or Mumbai, etc., etc., how do you thank them for being an existing customer? How do you get that, you know, one 360-degree view that, yeah, hey, I know you purchased something a couple of weeks back from my uh, Delhi outlet or from my other outlet? So, to a limit, we can 
we have that data to a limit we don't so there are department okay. stores where we don't get the data okay. but uh, like amit was saying united states of india <laughs> it is amazing how hyderabad and bangalore and delhi so we are running multiple countries in one and okay. uh, what works in delhi does not does work not anywhere work else any, like yeah. Uh, again, we were discussing with Santosh that right now we are working on autumn winter 24, sitting in Delhi with our heaters on, with our jackets, the entire team is working, not thinking that in Bombay people are still in their t-shirts and shorts, right? So Correct. you have to keep that in mind. Correct. So, so there is a geographical uh, oh, approach to it ab ob to some extent. I mean, I mean uh, values are different, holidays are different, like in the US Christmas is Christmas throughout for ev the entire country. Mm. But in here Diwali works, in Calcutta Durga Puja works. Calcutta Durga Puja Correct. is one of our largest months in the entire year. Okay, interesting. Right. So I think there are, India is a combination of a lot of countries with a lot of different values. And Correct. Each one of them has to be taken being separately. Imbibed. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Correct. Each one of them has to be taken separately. Absolutely, and you deal it accordingly, and you create that personalization segment accordingly. Fair enough, Varun. Harminder, we ah. should test this hypothesis. Go ahead. How many women audience member agree to what he said? Ki you are product loyalist, not brand loyalist. Product, acha hona chahiye. Brand ka matter hi nahi karta. Ek, do. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five. You were right. Seven, eight. Oh man, you were right. You are you are gaining you momentum, right. man. Eh? In that and case, who, Rahul. And who are loyal to the brands? <laughs> yes. Got it. Got the answer. Thanks. And that is where the discretionary spending comes. Mahenga hai to brand ka lena hai. Otherwise, kuch bhi chale. This is true. And the and the to answer your question, ki, uh, to answer his question, ki ab tak kyun nahi hua hai? Main iska answer bhot bhot asaan tarikhe se dena chaunga. Wo ye ki हम चांद पर जाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं ऑटो में बैठ के वो रीजन है कि टेक स्टैक ही नहीं है आपको पूरा एंड टू एंड प्रोवाइड करने के लिए राइट नाउ अ रिटेलर और अ ब्रांड जनरली टॉक्स टू अबाउट 10 टू 15 डिफरेंट वेंडर्स टेक स्टैक वेंडर्स और वो आपस में बात ही नहीं करता कोई और लॉयल्टी वाला उससे पॉस वाले से बात नहीं करेगा पॉस वाला उससे बात नहीं करेगा तो बिकॉज़ नोबडी इज टॉकिंग इन दिस एंटायर सिनेरियो दैट इज व्हाई इट इज ब्रोकन एंड दैट इज एंड डू यू फील दैट इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एलिमेंट फॉर रिटेलर्स लाइक दिस सो देयर आर टू आंसर्स टू दिस वन इज या तो कोई एक प्रोडक्ट लेके आए जिसमें सब कुछ हो करेक्ट वो हुआ नहीं अभी तक या फिर ये सारे इकोसिस्टम के लोग आपस में बात करना शुरू करें या तो दो ही तरीके हैं the second okay. is impossible the first is possible first is possible and that is what we try we are trying to great and you know go ahead go ahead go ahead santosh i think there's another element and you're right there is a lot of data around data does not talk to each other on the platforms yeah. fair and i think we don't have enough human minds to understand the data and take action correct how educated are we in really interpreting data we all learn on the job and that's about it correct hopefully we get it right to but some extent yeah but if you look at engineering or medicine, there is some science to it. Correct. In the Correct. education system, right? Correct. But we are not trained for that. So we're True. just kind of learning on the go and figuring it out. And that's where it's broken. True. Yeah. True. Last point is also, I think, cost. If you add up all the cost, it is the product we are selling for 100 rupees, the cost is coming out to be 200, 200 if you combine rupees. everything together. So I think that is also one of the, one of the points where things get mm, not so good. Okay. So I think uh, I completely agree to what you said. So as a technologist, I promote technology, but there are a lot of ground realities also which for a business which are real. So for example, in India, we cannot, I mean, as per our brand, I cannot comment on others, but uh, the reality is in terms of logistics, the challenges, right? If you uh, have the customer to buy online and exchange offline, it is easy to say. So we do that in UAE, we are not able to do it in U uh, India because of the cost and logistics and there are a lot of other uh, ground level realities, right? So the, as far as the technology is concerned, I would say, so we should not adopt the technology just by uh, listening to the jargons. Correct. So if, if the business requires it, then you adopt for it, even if the other brand is doing five things, you do two. Correct. It should support your business. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, correct. Uh, I agree with all of you. Uh, you know, we need, anything. it's need of the hour, 
where there should be some abstraction layer, some platform, you know, that integrates with your ERP, that integrates with your loyalty engines, that, in, you know, integrate with your, uh, your merchandising modules, your distribution management systems, your whatever, amalgamation of your online world, offline world. Absolutely, I, I, I completely second that part. But again, a question to you, Varun, considering the kind of business that you are in, if given the opportunity, how would you want to digitally transform this? Do you have a plan in mind? Uh, digital transformation, uh, uh, I didn't get the question clearly. So, say for example, if you know you have heard Santosh, you have heard Rahul, you have heard Amit, alright? Some part of it is offline, alright? Some part of it is online, alright? The kind of business that you are in, where a pause solution can sit into an offline, to some extent an online, if you are given an opportunity, alright? How would you want to digitally transform this, alright? How do you take the entire world of online to offline and offline to online? Uh, you have to, a answer, on to answer that is we have already done it. So, uh, Go ahead. Uh, yeah. I think it was a matter of time, expertise and energy required to solve a problem. So, okay. we have done that. It's been 11 years that we have been trying to solve this problem. I think eventually we have been able to solve a uh, majority of it. Okay. So, if you want to really experience a true omni-channel uh, experience with the software, uh, you can try us and and try us first okay. before before you uh, uh, before you quote me or uh, or take it with my words. So try it first and then you will you will find it. Sure. Uh, the answer is you cannot use legacy systems to build something of this sort. You cannot use legacy systems. You have to shun away whatever you have been using so far okay. and come to more uh, new age. Uh, be it Android, be it iOS, but you have to come to a new age platform. The operating system has to change to facilitate all these things. And I think so far, by far, we have been able to achieve it. Awesome. Uh, the next five, seven years belongs to people like us who have been uh, trying to solve this. And hopefully, uh, we have cracked it. And Good. I think none of none of these brands currently use Cubasta, but <laughs> very soon, very soon. <laughs> absolutely. Now, absolutely. now digital transformation, there's another word, quantum transformation. I yeah. was speaking on quantum transformation in the last week. So that is again, uh, companies in uh, outside the India also, they're evolving in that particular part. And there are a lot of things which can be done in terms okay. of technology, I believe. All right. Yeah. No, very valid point. Very He's my first customer going on this panel. <laughs> Excellent. Vishal, I think you are in a deep thought on this particular topic. You want to take the mic, maybe? So, uh, in your world, you know, the food for thought is that you probably sell through a Zomato, you might be selling through Swiggy, you might be seeing a lot of volumes of business coming in, alright? But in the overall gamut, is there a way that you're understanding your customer, point number one? Are you able to understand the buying, purchasing pattern? Do you still see the offline world existing? Do people come? Do they spend? Do they even show interest in walking in? What's your thought? Yeah, so see, we have around 40 dining outlets in 40 cities. Uh, we like to showcase the product. We do believe offline is important. So although online is majority of our business, and that too, it's not only through Zomato Swiggy. We get a lot of business from our own website, biryanibykilo.com, a lot of business from our own app, loyalties, call center, we have all India call center number. So, so we do traverse both worlds, first of all, offline, online. And customer data and behavior is very important for Correct. especially online people, which Correct. we have majority of that. Like I again said, we are very proud of our dine-ins in 40 cities, but that the majority of business is still online, which is delivery. So the, to understand the customer journey there is very important, how they purchase, some customers are the weekend customers. They like to use it as a family occasion so on a Sunday afternoon. Some are office customers. So, and some people are vegetarian. Some are non-vegetarian. Some are, you know, like kebab eaters. Some are biryani eaters. So we map everyone's journey and see also on the frequency. So, so people who have eaten 10 times. So they need different kind of, you know, nudges. The people or 20 times or 100 times. So people who have already used us only one time. You know? Correct. So mm -hmm. you will need, need different kind of nudges there or behavior. To, so of course it's a uh, we have a very strong CRM department, etc. But one thing I would like to say: these are two different worlds. Absolutely. So I don't think yeah. so. I'm agreeing. It's not seamless. Correct. So see what we are able to do. Let's say our DNA. If we are more suited, maybe I'm not saying we particularly we. 
but see online we are masters in terms of how to deliver what are the touch points how a Correct. writer will deliver even uh, are the biryanis in the handi how he will pass the message but when someone is coming in offline we are very again very proud of that you know in we have outlet from goa to guwahati to jalandhar to chandigarh to delhi but see there the customer mindset is also environment you know the some other factors so see doesn't mean someone who understands online very well will understand offline these are two and the requirements for customers absolutely two different Correct. games i would say if i can use that word doesn't mean excellence in one product will lead to excellence in the will other correct need excellence it requires different mindset different dna different touch points different way of thinking and executing at least great points great points vishal varun sir mere ek sawal hai online se offline jana aasan hai ya offline se online sir dono hi utne mushkil hai dono hi see lot of restaurant people talk to us ki they are very good at delivery so and they think we can make offline it's very difficult the people think see pizza and dominos is a very good example pizza hut is very good at dine in right but today pizza hut is a 1000 crore brand but dominos to jubilant is a 5000 crore brand correct pizza hut is right it's the same pizza as a category but see the mindset to go into delivery and the and the commitment see every organization is somewhere committed to something they have already put that infrastructure in place be it be offline or online See, otherwise there would have been no amazing if the borders could have switched. Absolutely, that fast. correct. So I think that DNA is very different, and I again agree it's not an easy thing to traverse both worlds, because the infrastructure and organization's mindset is normally built for one particular infrastructure and mindset. Of course, Zara will do online, like but they cannot compete with Sheen in online. Absolutely, right? that mindset which Sheen has is very different. no matter zara might be a leader in offline but she is a leader in online the mindset and the infrastructure play and the dna is very different excellent excellent vikas you have been a silent spectator for some time taking a cue from your earlier narrative all right uh, p safe a very very known brand very well accepted brand in the entire country and even uh, you know you are going global i am aware of that part uh, how do you think is your brand impacting uh, india at a country level do you want to take a hit at it so again uh, uh, i am repeating myself uh, tabu uh, very small uh, industry 6000 crores is a feminine hygiene industry duopoly between uh, jnj and whisper takes away 85% hmm. that's stay free uh, that's uh, sanitary napkins now as we say what we have been able to achieve is uh, innovation right uh, trust uh the only challenge which we face now is the repeat you know okay. we may measure repeat on our own website which is only 5% we are not a d2c brand d2c only a channel correct uh we uh, so so the repeat which is high, is highly around 50% right but what is the challenge which i am having on the pc is that people khareed to lete hai yaar mujhe use karna hai should be used within 15 to 15 days to 30 days but we see that people are using after 60 days after 80 days or maybe 180 days Ooh, okay. so so to, to educate on the uh, so education uh, awareness is the biggest challenge which we have again hygiene and health as an indian we don't take it seriously okay we really don't take seriously hame ek believe hai yaar hame kya hoga you know bahut saal pehle tak we should we didn't had health insurances correct because ek mindset tha when i was growing up यार हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस लेके क्या करोगे टर्म इंश्योरेंस लो लाइफ इंश्योरेंस लो पैसे वापस आएंगे वेरी ट्रू राइट सो आई थिंक हाइजीन और फेमिनिन हाइजीन और इंटीमेट हाइजीन और पर्सनल हाइजीन द सेम कैटेगरी व्हाट हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस वाज 20 इयर्स बैक ओके ओके द इंपैक्ट व्हिच वी हैव क्रिएटेड इज दैट वी हैव मेड मेनी पीपल अवेयर ऑफ देयर पर्सनल हाइजीन फॉर फॉर मेनी नाउ बीइंग हेल्दी डजंट मीन बीइंग नॉट सिक इट्स लाइक द वे ऑफ लाइफ राइट so that's what we have changed we have changed more and more uh, fathers coming forward and buying menstrual product for their daughters okay how many of us know about the menstrual cycle of our spouses hmm. very few we don't even talk about of the intimate health or a or a women health with our partner with our spouses very few we have into i have interviewed many friends of mine they don't know about it 
they don't know about menopause what is perimenopause right so i think that's what pcf is doing we are changing the narrative uh, we because we as a brand we don't ever had a vision statement or a mission statement we had a purpose statement purpose statement to have a pcf a toilet seat sanitizer in each and every woman's purse the uti should go down you talk about a sustainable period care i think these are all factors which uh, we talk about talk about female pleasure nobody talks about it i think we have a domina by pcf which is our, uh, our sexual wellness brand okay uh, female condoms right because we okay. empower women for unwanted sex and unwanted pregnancy or stis okay so so that is how we are changing the narrative and i think it it will be a long process of course uh, it will be will be there when i'm gone long gone but uh, it's a legacy which i'll be living behind because it's not going to change very very soon it takes a lot of time absolutely you know uh, this reminds me of a line you know uh, the temple of success always resides in health you know if you're of a healthy mindset things will follow and they will fall in place so absolutely agree with you uh, vikas on that particular part a uh, few last minutes left i want to open the panel to the audience audience if you have any questions uh, you want to ask any questions to uh, you know to the esteemed panelists please feel free any questions from the audience anybody please sir uh, you want a mic i can give you my mic go ahead come come yeah yeah you're audible go ahead Hi. Good. Uh, my name is Vineet. I am from Cubaster. Uh, okay. My question is for Santosh ji. Uh, so you mentioned about you know using sustainability in your products and not talking about it, especially you know that elephant poop example uh, with which you use uh, your tags and all. So uh, you know as a marketing student, which I was like many uh, decades back. So uh, so there were four P's of marketing. Like and nowadays we see purpose also as another P of marketing. so so what do you think purpose is what uh, so in this case your case sustainability is a purpose so is that uh, your mission your vision or is that a marketing tool that helps you in selling the product sustainability is a big word and i think it is well abused we are not claiming that it's sustainable in every way but we are very mindful of the fabrics that we use the materials that we use of the way we package our products and so on so that we are good to the planet yeah we it is not a usp in the sense that we don't communicate it we don't say buy me because we do this or buy me because we are paying for you know mindfulness it is there in our communication it's it is subtle so our usp is driven around design so it is it is a fabric which is natural it is the designs which are unique it is the inspiration that is from around the indian ocean excellent yeah. thank you thank you that's answer my question thank you any further questions anybody else from the audience it's an open forum it's an open mind guys anybody has any questions yeah please hi uh, my name is deepak i'm from cubaster uh my Again. question is to uh, all of you except varun because he is part of the same organization uh what does digital transformation mean to your business is it just the introduction of a new application new platform which can maybe reduce your time to perform couple of jobs or uh is there a comparative analysis that is required before deciding which system should be brought in because this is a cost and this is the effort that it will yield or, or i will be able to save this much amount of uh, effort so how do you do that uh, i know i'm uh, it will take a lot of time for each one of you to answer but any one of uh, or two of you who could wish to answer this you want to give it a try amit so and I then think. go ahead go ahead santosh i think there are two sides of digital uh, i'm not an expert but maybe in this taking this on there is a the e-commerce side of digital and there is the media side of digital so let me take on the e-commerce side uh, i spend most of my life in retail so i understand offline better than online i keep challenging my team to say that if our stores can create a beautiful experience for our customers when they walk in they can see stuff 
and they can feel about the brand. Can you create the same thing on our website? So why should the website be just a place where you click a button, shop, go to cart, and all of that? Why can't the website be a place where you hang out? You, when, you, when you're in a mall, you don't necessarily are, sh are shopping. You're also window shopping. You're just browsing. Correct. You're just coming in contact with different brands. Correct. Why can't the website be that too? Yeah. Interesting. So I think that is transformation. So why can't the website be a place where I come occasionally and hang out, learn about journeys, learn about music? Excellent. We have our own Nico radio, right? But how often do our customers come and check out what's happening on Nico radio? I think that's transformation. Beautiful. And I would love to see e-commerce take that role. Uh, and I think today e-commerce is, is more of a discount channel, which is unfortunate. There's so much more we can do with e-commerce. Excellent. So you take so the entire I offline think the experience is and build it online. Attention deficit. People are atten attention deficit. Nobody would come to you as a Spotify channel uh, listening to your music, right? He he's there for a purpose. He would come just do some clicks and buy and, and move on. I think the time that we have at our disposal to buy anything online uh, does that. But you have to entirely change the narrative, change the website completely. Like you will have to go in the VR zone uh, so that the website is not even a website, it is an experience zone itself. So I think there has to be some drastic change to be done there. But how successful is that? I, we, the world still needs to, not just India, the world still is waiting uh, for, for that, that to happen. Transformation yeah, to yeah. unravel. Amit, over to you. So I think uh, I'll touch on the productivity and data part of it, right? So uh, for example, uh, we have a merchandise team. They are, uh, you know, replenishing stocks at various stores. Right, they're doing well, uh, but using AI, hmm. if I need to send 436 pieces, which are required for that particular store as per the geographical location and as per the previous sales trend and the predictions, I think that will help me saving my uh, cost in terms of producing the inventory and the planet also. There are uh, 90 million ton tons of textile waste, which is happening in us every year wow right so there are few things which can be embedded I'll, I'll touch upon the data part there are people coming into the store there are, you must have seen that guard has the counter right they do that they're traditionally doing that and they're doing well but we don't understand how many male and female are coming how many people uh, mood is separate let's forget about the mood correct right so this kind of data helps us we are a woman centric brand but 30% of male are buying for women. So these kind of data helps us understanding our VM part of it. How should we have our window? So productivity, it's not that H&M is doing virtual try-ons mm. in their uh, trial rooms. We should also do that. No, we don't need that. Our stores doesn't support that. We, have a, we are a high street brand, right? We are present in malls also. But as I said earlier also, having the business equipment, I think what is required for the business, we should touch upon that. We use a lot of no, low-code, no-code platforms to automate SOPs, to automate a lot of things. Excellent. But try Correct. on. If, if we think like we need to have a bigger platform, we do that. But firstly, POC should be tried upon the various platforms which are readily available nowadays, luckily. Correct. Right. So understanding, I mean, whatever is the need, we should do. This is, I think, this is digital transformation for me. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Anyone else? From the audience, any questions? All right. Okay. Thank you. I, I just want to take this opportunity of thanking the entire uh, panelists. Thank you so much, you know, for taking your time and sharing some very uh, innate and very, you know, uh, business oriented perspectives on how the retail in India is evolving, becoming more personalized, going the omni way, uh, you know, coexisting with the offline world. So thank you so much and a great audience. Thank you to all of you. Uh, you know, for being a patient listener. So, again, Thanks. thank Thanks. you so much. Thank you for moderating it so well. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>